The first jet-powered aircraft in the U.S. Navy during World War II, the Ryan FR Fireball, was a revolutionary machine. With its combination of piston and jet engines, it could launch from a carrier and pursue kamikaze planes. With its jet engine running, the FR was able to take off, rise, and land on a carrier thanks to its unique technology. But it was too late, with only 66 fighters authorized, following Japan's atomic bomb surrender. Because of the aircraft's tragic carrier crashes, it was given the moniker, the Widowmaker. The airplane was finally scrapped due to structural issues. The Fireball's carrier was quickly terminated due to the superiority of jet technology, even though it used an inventive blend of piston and jet engines. The United States started experimenting with jet propulsion in 1941, but the British had already made headway with Sir Frank Whittle's development of the turbojet. Nevertheless, early engines had problems with unpredictable throttle shifts, excessive fuel consumption, and poor acceleration. The Bell P-59 Aero Comet, the first jet-powered aircraft, was flown by the Army forces on October 2, 1942. The Bureau of Aeronautics had to decide between continuing to operate antiquated aircraft and pursuing jets, which needed extensive runways and couldn't be flown by carriers. The U.S. Navy entered the competition for jet-powered aircraft in late 1942 and combined it with piston-engineered technology. The specs, overseen by Admiral John McCain, were for a fighter equipped with a jet engine to provide higher performance for a quicker ascent and a piston engine to enable takeoff from a carrier. The Navy had no prior experience with carrier-borne fighters, but it chose the San Diego-based Ryan Aeronautics Corporation's design. Ben T. Salmon and William T.M. constructed the Ryan Model 28, which was flown by the first person to cross the Atlantic Ocean solo and non-stop. The aircraft was a low-wing monoplane with a smooth metal surface and a bubble canopy for good vision. It was powered by a right-cylinder radial engine and a General Electric I-16 turbojet, and it had the capacity to carry four machine guns and four rockets. Tricycle landing gear and a foldable wing with laminar flow were two further advances. The aircraft was more dependable than previous jet-propelled aircraft due to the combination of jet and piston propulsion. With a total weight of 11,652 pounds, the Fireball was bigger and heavier than previous fighters such as the Grumman F-6F Hellcat and the F-8F Bearcat. But the jet engine was quite good in high-speed technical settings, and the Navy could use it to hunt down kamikazes, which were becoming more and more of a concern. Shortly after its first flight on June 25, 1944, the first prototype of the XFR-1 fighter was developed in 14 months without a jet engine. 20 XFR versions were constructed as a result of the aircraft's center of gravity and aerodynamic shape problems. Both of the prototype's flights were successful, and the second one was delivered in the same year. With just the piston engine, the aircraft could reach a maximum speed of 400 miles per hour and cruise at 160 miles per hour. It could go 1,600 miles at a time and could soar more than 43,000 feet above other aircraft. But on October 13, 1944, during a test at the Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake, the aircraft's good fortune came to an end. Wing rivet weakness caused the Douglas Fireball fighter to struggle to withstand compressibility effects during flight, ultimately leading to its collapse. After the pilot during a test flight was unable to recover from a drop from 35,000 feet, two additional aircraft crashed. The canopy of the third prototype fell off during a high-speed flyby, causing it to crash at Lindbergh Field. It was discovered that the construction was insufficient to withstand tension. Double wing rivets, 
a redesigned tail with stabilizers, and a replacement for the Douglas double slotted flaps were added to later aircraft. After flight testing was restarted, the aircraft was able to land and take off from an escort carrier charger with success in 1945. Although they were first flown in March 1945, the Fireball fighter aircraft were never used in battle by the U.S. Navy's VF-66 fighter unit. Two of the three Fireballs that were brought for testing sustained damage upon landing. The fighter entered the conflict quite late, despite its technological novelty. The U.S. Navy had requested 1,000 Fireballs, but after the atomic bomb was detonated and Japan submitted, the request was revoked. On November 6, 1945, the Fireball became the first aircraft to land on a ship with jet power when the pilots were reassigned to the VF-41 squadron. An incredible flying machine was the goal of the Navy fighter known as the Fireball. The piston engine was the sole thing that pilots would switch on during landings. But in an amazing display of skills, the pilot used the jet engine to land the aircraft after the radial engine failed. Of the 22 trained pilots, only 14 accomplished the six takeoffs and landings aboard a carrier, despite the fireball being ranked higher than other Pacific Navy fighters. A pilot struck the target flag and fell into the water in one of the aircraft's three fatal incidents in 1946. The aircraft was retired on August 1, 1947, because it could not endure repeated carrier landings. The pilots called it the Widowmaker. Several of the aircraft broke apart after hard landings at a high angle of approach, and they were discarded. For promotional reasons, the Widowmaker was rechristened VF-1E. The XF-2R, Dark Shark was developed as a result of the Fireball Fighter's successful test platform. This type, which used a General Electric T-31 turboprop engine in place of the Fireball's piston-driven engine, combined turboprop and turbojet power. Against the 1,600 pounds the jet engine provided, the engine added 500 pounds of thrust. Positive findings from the XF-2R's first flight in 1946 suggested that it may be used in carrier operations. The power variations of the aircraft were clearly visible, and the model's suitability for carrier operations was validated. Initially, the Navy concentrated on jet aircraft, but only one Dark Shark prototype was made. The Dark Shark was examined by the U.S. Air Force as a possible rival for the consolidated Volte XP-81 escort fighter. They ordered two XF-2Rs with J-34 turbojets, which were regarded as dependable because of its two gas turbines and could reach a maximum speed of more than 500 miles per hour. However, due to developments in other jet aircraft development, the program was discontinued. Nevertheless, on May 2, 1947, the Dark Shark reached 39,160 feet, setting a record for the highest height reached by a turboprop-powered aircraft. While the Fireball and Dark Shark were both impressive and competent fighters, the superiority of all jet aircraft was frequently demonstrated. <laughs>